Praise the Lord. What a blessing it is to be in the house of God here this Wednesday evening. Thank you for tuning in to our virtual service here at Foundation Baptist Church this Wednesday. And we will, as usual, we'll have a great time in the house of God. And we love to sing here at Foundation Baptist Church. So it's time to grab your hymn books or you can watch on the screen that we have here on the, on the TV here where we project the words. All right, let's uh, begin this evening with Look and Live. Look and Live. I have a message from the Lord, hallelujah, the message unto you again. It's recorded in His Word, hallelujah, it is only that to look and live. Everyone, look and live, my brother, live, look to Jesus. And live only he alone can give you eternal life only he alone can save your soul it is well with my soul it is well with my soul we're drawing closer and closer for full service here our foundation of the church when peace like a river Yeah. 
I love the last verse where it talks about the Lord descending. This is come talking about the coming back of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the, and, and, and the, the songwriter is saying his soul is well, regardless if Jesus comes back. Let's have let's sing back the last verse of this song. The last verse of this song. It is well with my soul. And Lord is the when my feast seven years of feast praise the lord for that and let's have brother branch as he will lead us in prayer this evening let's all our heads and close our eyes father in heaven we thank you god for another blessed day to be in your house father we thank you for the, the few that are here oh god uh, to have church oh lord and Amen. father we bless you that we can come and we can sing unto you and we can have service lord father pray that you bless all the singing and all the preaching from your word this evening and I pray that everyone will learn something from your word. I pray that you bless those that are watching at home or wherever they are, O oh God. I pray that you will speak to their hearts and help them to live for you and serve Amen. you even in these uh, times, O oh God, where it's hard to do so. Father, we pray and ask that you bless the remaining of this service. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, it's time for our scripture song. It's time for a scripture song. And uh, <clears throat> let's, uh, let's sing um, Sam. 126 Psalm 126 1, 2, 3 When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion we were like them that dream then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with sin The Lord had done great things for them. The Lord had done great things for us. We love, we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south, as the swimming tears are reaping joy. They that sow in fear shall reap in joy. We love, we are glad. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again. Shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things. We love, we are glad. Praise the Lord. We put those words in order as uh, it has to be sang there. Praise the Lord. And um, we will stop there. And of course, just to give you a few announcements here that we have, um, we will still continue to have our services here at Foundation Baptist Church. Also, uh, our service here will still continue with the same time, Sunday at 10 in the morning, and of course, Sunday evening at 6 o'clock. And we will have our prayer and Bible study at, at 6.30, of course, on Wednesdays, like we're doing tonight. And um, pray, pray for our country that we will be able to have all our service back in full again. I know our airport will be open back again in, in phases from July. And I'm sure we should be able to have some kind of 
uh, of phase in where we can have our church full church service back again. Please don't lose the opportunity. God has opened our eyes where we can uh, see that church is needed and we need God. All right, so please try to be here. Also, I just want to thank all those who have been giving to the faith promise, the tithes and offering. Thank you for doing so. Um, you know, um, you know when the, the 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 widow went into the temple there with Jesus, and she showed up that that one uh, small amount there. Um, you know, God says that you know what she give is more than everybody else. So it's not the volume that you give, but it's what you give and the sacrifice you have made to give. To the Lord, so please continue to try to give, continue to um, try to make the deposit into the um, into the account. If you cannot, of course, uh, the number on the screen there. Please, you call our pastor and try to get out to him. If you can't get him, you're free to call me with the number there. Also, with the other, when you ask for prayer, some of you have my number. If you can, you call me, and I will get a message to him and make arrangement with him to pick up that that offering. Right. So um, that's all for our announcement. Please continue also to. To pray, pray for our country, pray for the COVID-19 that um, we can able to adapt. If we can't get rid of it, we can adapt, wear our masses, and we can still go about doing the work of the Lord and uh, continue to do what God wants us to do. Amen. And uh, please continue to pray. Pray for our pastor also, and uh, and, and Mrs. Ibrahim. You know she's getting a baby. Pray for her health and her strength. Pray that God will cover them and protect them and help my. And I also pray that my pastor will continue. Um, to stay right and stay righteous. A lot of pastors are falling away and uh, I just want you to continue. Please pray for him. Pray for him to be right, stay right and for him to preach what God wants him to preach and not what he wants to preach. And pray for our service here and our people that we, they will continue to grow and stay right even though we're not having a full service here at Foundation Baptist Church. Alright, let's have our next song here. Heaven came down. Heaven came down to fifteen. Wonderful day when at the cross I live. 
the Lord. Amen. Let's prepare for the message here tonight as we have Brother Joel Rahama preach for us. Good evening. Uh, welcome to our Wednesday night service. And uh, it's a blessing to preach and teach God's word tonight. And um, I want you to turn your Bibles tonight to 1 Corinthians. We can look at the scripture in 1 Corinthians. Uh, 1 Corinthians. I'm going to find my message. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. Amen. Alright, here the Bible says, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, it says, Wherefore, let him that think it, he stand it, take heed, lest he fall. So before we start, let's pray to God to lead us. Uh, Lord in heaven, God, thank you for this opportunity, Lord, and thank you for tonight. And I pray, God, as I preach and teach your word, I pray, God, your people will be, uh, you, you will speak to them, God, from, with, with the Holy Spirit, God. And I pray, God, you help me and guide me and give me the right uh, wisdom to choose what to say, Lord, and what not to say, Lord. And I pray you bless this message, Lord, in your name, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Here we see, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, we see the Bible says, Paul is writing to the church of Corinthians, and he's warning them. He said, Wherefore, let him that think he standeth take heed, lest he fall. Now, Paul is not talking to a baby Christian. He's talking to a Christian who knew God. He's talking to a Christian that went, have some knowledge of God, or probably their one-year Christian or two-year, they have a knowledge of God. You know, here the word it says, Wherefore, let him that think he standeth take heed, lest he fall. In other words, God, uh, Paul is telling these people that don't put confidence in yourself because when you put your confidence in yourself you will fall this is what Paul is saying you know through the Bible we see great people fall I mean when you look at Abraham the Bible says Abraham was one of the most faithful as mine he was called a friend of God yet we find Abraham fall away in Egypt when the famine was in the land I mean he was a faithful man yet he fall away we, we saw uh, David. David, a man, the Bible says, is after God's own heart. Still, he fell away. The Bible says he committed sin with Bathsheba. But he gets right with God eventually. We see strong men like Samson. I mean, a man who's filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And God gave him great power to slay a lion. I mean, a man was used greatly in those days. He was strong, but still he fell because of uh, Bathsheba. And we see Peter in the, Old Te the New Testament. I mean, a man that is bold, a man that should have a zeal for God, full of boldness. Yet we see Peter, when uh, Jesus was being about to crucify, we see Peter denying the Lord Jesus Christ. See, folks, it's important for us not to put confidence in ourselves. Because when we do that, we will fall backward. We will end up backsliding in our Christian life. And what's going on today in our world with the pandemic and in our country with the election, Folks, I know church also, folks, it's easy to get to be backsliding, to be a uh, backsliding, folks. It's very easy. We can backslide very easy. And this even I want to entitle this message, why Christian go forward, sorry, why Christian go backward instead of forward. Why Christian go backward instead of forward? There's many reasons. I'm going to show you some uh, points here tonight. First of all, I want to show you what is backsliding. I mean, what is backsliding? When the Bible says backsliding, or you hear Christian use the word backsliding, what does it mean? I want to show you from the Bible. Look at 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 3. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 3. In the Old Testament. In 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 3, you can look at it when you find it. The Bible says, And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statue of David his father. Only he sacrificed and burned incense in high places. Here we see a man that loved God. Here we see a wise man. I mean, the Bible says Solomon loved God. His heart was for God. And now I want you to turn your Bibles to first, same first King chapter 11, verse 1. First King chapter 11, verse 1. So in the first verse we see, Solomon loved the Lord. Now when you look at 11 verse 1, let's see what happened to Solomon after he gained great success. The Bible says, 
But King Solomon, he become king now, loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh. So we see here now, Solomon changing from loving God with his heart now to loving uh, many strange women or many strange or hidden women. We see uh, Solomon now get his heart caught up with. Now look at verse 3. Verse 3 in the same chapter. So what happened when Solomon loved all his wife? The Bible says, And he had 700 wives, princes, and 300 concubines. And his wife, and look at this verse here, and his wife turned away his heart. 1 Kings 11, 3. So we see Samson loved God. Then he started to love many wives. Now his wife turned away his heart from God. Look at verse 9. Verse 9. It says, And the Lord was angry with Sol Solomon, because his heart was turned from the Lord, God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. You see, folks, backsliding is not just missing church or not being present in church. Backsliding is when your heart was for God, then eventually it divert to something else. You see, Solomon loved God at first, but eventually his heart divert from loving God, and his heart ended up loving strange women. And the Bible says, this is, I believe, the right term that you can describe Backsliding. Backsliding begins by missing church. It begins in your heart, the inner man. It begins in the inner man and it manifests through the outer man. You will know somebody when they're getting backsliding. I want to show you some things about a person who have backsliding. What takes place? By the way, when a person backslides, it do not happen immediately. It happened gradually, slow by slow, until they're out of church or until they're out of the will of God. It don't happen immediately. I'm going to show you this from the life of Lot. The life of Lot. I want you to turn the Bible to Genesis chapter 13, verse 10. Genesis 13, verse 10. Many of us know the story, uh, the strife between... Abraham and his nephew Lot. Many of us know the story, so I'm going to explain it, but I'm going to show you some, uh, some points about the life of Lot that caused him to backslide. Look at Genesis chapter 13, verse 10. Here what the Bible says. And Lot lift up his eyes. Now I want you to look at the first phrase only. And Lot lift up his eyes. You see, before we backslide, one of the first things that happen is that we change from, we change the direction of the things we, we look at. You see, some go backwards because they allow their eyes to lead them to covetousness. You see, we gotta be careful with our eyes, what we look at. Because what we look at will eventually influence our heart and then our thoughts. Are we gonna be on backslide? Just like Lot. Lot, the first step he made, he looked at the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. The Bible says there was a beautiful city in those times, but the people were very wicked. And Lot, the Bible says, look at the city, and his eyes deceive him. And that is one of the reasons why Lot had to face such a great consequence when he go into Sodom. You see, the Bible says, Lot's eyes lead him to covetousness. Why? Because the Bible says Lot was rich, but wanted more. Look at the same chapter, uh, Genesis chapter 13, verse 5. Genesis 13, verse 5. Here what the Bible says, And Lot also which went with Abraham, Abraham, or Abraham, had flocks and herds and herds and tents. You see, Lot was rich. He had things. He had a lot of things. But Lot wanted more. So his eyes deceive him, and he wanted more, and he looked at Saddam. Now his eyes cause him to go backward instead of forward. There's many people today that, you know, the Christian life to them might be not so nice. It might not be so attractive. And eventually they allow their eyes to be attracted, be attracted by the shiny things of this world. And they look at these things in the world, and they, they, they think it's so nice, and they, they allow themselves 
to be drawing towards it and eventually falling away, just like Lot. The folks, God wants us to keep our eyes off the, the things of this world, but after the nice and shiny things. The Bible says, God will judge those who want to keep their eyes on sin. I'm going to show you this in Genesis chapter 19, verse 26. Look at Genesis 19, verse 6. Verse 26. Here the Bible says, But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. The Bible tell, the Bible tells us that God was going to destroy Sodom, and God warned Lot to not to look back, him and his wife. And the Bible says his wife, because she loved sin, she looked back. And the Bible she turned to a pillar of salt. The folks, if we allow the wicked things, maybe on television, the wicked things this world enter into our eyes, God will judge us, just like Lot White. God will send judgment upon us. The Bible will tell us that one of the first tactics or tricks that Satan used to deceive Eve in the Garden of Eden is that he used her eyes to deceive her. Look at Genesis 3.16. Genesis 3.6, sorry. Genesis 3, 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree, be, uh, a, tree to, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof. Look at the first phrase of the verse. It says, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes. You see, Eve looked at this fruit, and God forbid Eve from eating it, and she still allowed her eyes to distract her, to allow her eyes to deceive her, and she ended up falling in sin, she ended up causing Adam to fall in sin. And this is one of the ways that Satan will use to get you to backslide. He will use your eyes. The things out there might look nice, but Satan will show you the nice part of things out there, but he don't show you the, the bad parts, the side effect of those things out there. You see, if you're going to go forward, folks, the Bible says, in the book of Psalms, David says this, it says, I will set no wicked things before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. This David says, the one the way he protects himself from going backward is by protecting his eyes. We see Lot fall because he looked at Sodom and he thought it was nice. We see Eve and now we see David, a man who did the same mistake but he learned from it. Now he said he will guard his eyes. He will set no wicked things before, before his eyes. Number two. What is another sign of backsliding? What is another sign of backsliding? I want you to look at Genesis 13, 11. Look back at Genesis 13, 11. The Bible says, and then Lot chose him all the plain of Gordon. And then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan. You see, here we see that when Lot was separated from Abraham, he decided to live on the flat land, on the, on the plain. The plain is where it's a flat uh, piece of land. Normally, the people of God live on mountains. When you read the book of Genesis, you will see Abraham praying on an altar on a mountain. And here we see now Lot changing from living in mountains, now we're living on a flat piece of land. You know, one of the signs of a backsliding Christian is that normally when they get backsliding in heart, they will change from living by standard or living by high standard and will drop it and eventually live by low standard. And this is exactly what we see Lot did. Abraham was living in a mountain. He was fasting. He was praying to God. But Lot, he changed from that. He diverted from that. Now he's living on a flat piece of land. Just like Christians, when they backslide, they will drop their standard. They will drop their conviction. They will dress less. They will attend church less. They will be, attend soul winning less. And they will pray less. They will read the Bible less. They drop their standards. Number two, signs of a backsliding Christian is they drop their standard. 
I want to show you something. What is the result of a life without standard? We know that Lot, many of us heard his story, we know that Lot lost his, his wife and eventually lost some of his children, his son-in-law, and eventually lost his daughters that came out of Sodom with him. You see, the, the, the life without standard is tragic. It is destructive. But what is the life of someone who set high standard in their life? I want you to look in the same chapter, verse 14 to 15. Verse 14 to 15, Genesis 14 to 15. This is Abraham. Abraham chose to live in the mountains. And the Bible says, God appeared unto him. It says, and the Lord said unto Abraham, or Abraham, after Lot was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art, sorry, and look from the place where thou art northward, and southward and eastward and westward for all the land which thou seest to thee will i give it and to thy seed forever the bible says god had abraham in a mountain and god tell him to look east to look west to look north to look south and god said all this land you see it is yours you see a person that stick with god way to stick with high standard god will reward him god will bless your life but when you drop your standard because you want to achieve more or you want to do something else beside the will of God, you will find yourself like Lot. You're going to find yourself living by low standard and you will lose everything. But if you want to stick with God's ways and live by high standard, God going to bless you just like he did to Abraham. Number three, what's another sign of backsliding is compromising. Look at Genesis chapter 13 verse 12. Genesis 13, verse 12. <clears throat> Here the Bible says, And Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the city of the plain, and pitched his tent towards Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked, and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Here we see Lot was going closer to Sodom. Now he pitches tents towards Sodom. You see, Lot compromised enough. Here the Bible tells us that God hated these people. They were wicked sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Yet, what choose to go and live near these people? You see, a person who is backsliding, they will compromise a lot. They will be involved in things which God might hate, and it will affect them. You see, they will lose their conviction. Once they lose their standards, as I said, they will end up losing their conviction, and end up going closer and closer to sin until destruction get them. Here, what the Bible will tell us, folks, in 2 Timothy 2, verse 22. I'm going to read it for you. It says, it says, flee also youthful lust. And it says, the ending, but follow righteousness, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Now what God says, flee from youthful lust. God said, flee from sin. Because you are close to sin, then you are compromising. And God will judge you. And you will find yourself going backward instead of forward. Number four. <clears throat> you know, when you keep backsliding, and going far or far away from God, this is going to happen to you. Look at Genesis 14, verse 11. Genesis 14, verse 11. The Bible says the enemy of Sodom, there were some kings that hated the, 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 the king of Sodom. They wanted to uh, overthrow the king. They wanted to invade the land. The Bible says this will happen. And they took all the goods of Sodom. They after they defeat the kings of Sodom and their men, it says, and they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their victuals and went their way. And they took Lot, Abraham's son, who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and departed. Here we find that because Lot boxed life and he was in a place that God hated, he was in a place that wasn't God's will for him. Now he lost now the enemy, sorry, capture him. You know when you keep backsliding, what's gonna happen? Satan gonna capture you. Satan gonna you're gonna become Satan's slave. Just like Lot, these kings, these enemies of Sodom, take real Lot, take real all the all these goods. Just just like that, when you backslide, the devil is gonna do. He's gonna take away everything he gives you, and he will enslave you. You're gonna become a slave to him, and you're gonna be under captivity. Satan is going to capture you. Number five. I want to show you another one. The Bible says, 
another sign of a backsliding Christian is this. Look at Genesis 19 verse 5. Genesis 19 verse 5. It says, And they called unto Lot, and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. And Lot went out at the door unto them, and shut, and shut the door after, after him, and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters, which have not no mine. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. Here we see Lot. The Bible says there was a bunch of Sodomites or wicked men was in front of the door of Lot. The Bible says God sent some messengers to Lot, and these men want to come and knew that, meaning that they want to have sensual pleasure. And here we see Lot, a backsliding Christian or a backsliding man, make a foolish decision. I mean, make a very stupid decision. You know, when you backslide, your decision making will be weakened, your decision making will be foolish. I mean, here's Lot going to take his two young daughters who are pure and give them to a bunch of sodomites. I mean, they're sick. And it was just wicked. I mean, no father with the right sense will do something like this. But because he boxed light, his decision making was weakened. And many times today, we see the same thing happen in our society. Boxsliding uh, box parents often do this a lot. They give their children, their children who are life or not damaged by sin, who are still pure, they give their pure uh, children who have a good testimony and can live for God to give them over to what? They give them to the world, which destroy the testimony, which rob them of the blessing that God wanted them to have. The folks, if you backslide, you're going to make foolish decisions. You're going to, you're going to start compromising. You're going to be captured by the enemy. You're going to be under Satan's influence. You're going to control you and do whatever you want to do to you. I want to show you another one. <clears throat> Look at Genesis 19.14. Genesis 19.14. Let's go down a little bit. It says, and Lot went out. God now went to about to destroy Sodom and all the wicked men of Sodom and everything of Sodom. And the Bible says Lot was going to warn his family. And this was happened. And Lot went out and speak unto his sons in law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy the city. But he seemed as one that mock, mocked it unto his son-in-law. You see, the Bible says, here's Lot trying to be, get back right with God, and now we find Lot was being mocked by his son-in-law. I mean, they didn't believe Lot. They didn't believe Lot's message that God going to destroy your city. They didn't believe it. Why? Because Lot was living just like them. And when you backslide and you end up in the world, what's what going to happen? You're going to damage the most important thing that is valuable in your Christian life, and that's your testimony. Lot lost his testimony. If Lot had a good testimony, these men might maybe be saved. They might listen to him and come out of that city before God destroyed. But because of Lot's failure, these men didn't listen. The Bible said they mock him. The folks, the reason why we need to be faithful in times like this, in times like a lot of corruption happen, is because if we don't be that faithful and we go backwards, then your testimony, which is valuable to God and to the world, is going to be destroyed. That's why God wants you to stay faithful. God wants you to stay, go forward in your Christian life, not backward. Don't be like Lot and lose your Christian testimony. Lastly, I want to share this last one to finish. Another sign of a backsliding Christian. This is when it reaches the ultimate level or when they reach to, to become uh, reprobates to the Christian life. Look at Genesis 19 16. 19 16. 
the Bible says, when God was going to destroy the city, this is what Lot did. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hands and upon the hands of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters. And the Lord being merciful unto him, they brought him forth and set him without the city. The Bible says, while he lingered, the men laid upon his hands. We see Lot was so backsliding, he, he caught up so much in this city that he loved. The Bible says he was lingering. When God is going to destroy this city, he was lingering. You sometimes, Christians, you become so backsliding and you become reprobate and you become so in love with sin. The Bible says the men of God or the angel of God, they hold Lot by his hand and his family and they bring him out of there. Lot was lingering. See, folks, people who are backsliding, they will eventually, even though they're Christian, they eventually will fall in love with sin. And they would not want, they would not want to come out. They will linger there. They will want to stay there. But because of the mercy of God, we see in this verse, is the reason why Lot is out of this state. And folks, you might be backsliding like Lot. You might be, don't want to give up your sins. You might want to stick with whatever you have in your life. But you know, folks, here Lot, here God was merciful to Lot. He was still gracious to Lot, even though he caused so much destruction. But God says, the Bible says, and the Lord be merciful unto him. Folks, God is a God of mercy. God is a God of second chance. You might be backsliding right now. You said, well, I don't do nothing wrong. I don't curse. I don't uh, drink, whatever. You know, folks, the, like I can show you before. Backsliding begins in your heart. Backsliding is when your heart turns away from God to something else. And that will happen gradually. And eventually you find yourself in a far place and you want to know how you end up there. See, God is merciful. He's willing to give you a second chance. You might be watching tonight or maybe listening and you might probably be guilty. And we all backslide. I backslide many times. You probably backsliding now. Folks, God is merciful and He can give a second chance. We serve a God of second chance. We serve a God that can restore you back to the state that He wants you. God don't want you to live in sin all the time because God wants to use you. Lot was wicked, yes, God was merciful. The Bible tells us in Jeremiah 3, verse 22. Jeremiah 3, verse 22. The Bible says, Return ye, backsliding children, and I will heal you. And I will heal your backsliding. God said, Return ye, backsliding children, and I will heal your backsliding. Folks, it's never too late to turn back to God. Your heart probably be turned away to something else, but you can make a difference. Only you can change that. The preacher can't change it. God will not change it unless you make the decision to turn your heart fully back to God. Because once your heart is not back to God fully, you're guilty of backsliding. And it will happen gradually until you end up in a place like Lot. I want to say this last week. <clears throat> See, folks, I want to tell you before I finish the message. One of the reasons why Lot backslide and end up in Sodom is it's not because Lot was evil or Lot was wants to do that. You see, this happened to Lot years before he became a man. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 12, you can look at it. Genesis chapter 12, the Bible says God was leading Abraham to the promised land. And the Bible says a famine was in, a famine was in the land. The Bible says Abraham went down to Egypt. And when he went down to Egypt, Lot was with him and his whole family. And Lot was exposed to Egypt. And the Bible pictured Egypt as a wicked place in those times, a place of ungodliness. And I believe Lot picked up a lot of those ungodly ways and he the lust for the world in Egypt. And the Bible says Abraham get right back uh, right with God. He take Lot out of that city and his wife. But folks, Lot was taken physically, but his heart was still in Egypt. That's why you find him looking for another Egypt, and he ended up in Sodom. See, folks, many of us, the problem with us, to be honest, is we have been saved very late. Some of us as teenagers, some of us as adults. And our life, like Lot, was exposed to sin profoundly years ago. And you know, because of sin, those things come back and haunt you and affect you and want you to turn back and go back to those things. 
See, folks, it's easy to go backward, but it's very hard to go forward. Folks, if you want to go forward for God, if you want to stay faithful to God and grow, it's going to take a fight to stay faithful. It's going to, stay a, it's going to take a fight. It's going to take some consistency in your Christian life. If you don't want to go backward, I can backslide. Everybody here can backslide. If, if David did, the man after God will not backslide, you are capable, uh, you, are, you can also backslide too. I want to tell you, like I said, if you are straying away from God, and which is not the right time to do, uh, right now to stray away from God, this is the time to be faithful to God. If you are straying away, you're looking tonight, tonight is the night you can get it right, and you can be restored with fellowship and your relationship with God. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. Bow your, he your heads and close your eyes. Oh Father in heaven, Lord, thank you for uh, this evening service. I do pray, God, for those who are listening and those who are here, God, I pray, Lord, that maybe the message speak to them in some way, Lord. I pray, God, that you work in their heart and life. And Lord, help me to stay faithful, help me to grow and not to backslide, God. And I pray, God, that you strengthen our people, God, is, is a tough time we're facing without church, uh, some people without work, God. I pray, God, you get in grace and be merciful unto them, God, and help them stay faithful and continue to go forward, God, in that backward door. I pray, God, for church to open up soon, God, and I pray for peace in our country. And I pray, God, for... Uh, I pray for those lost souls, God, that need the gospel, Lord. I pray, God, that we will take the initiative, God, and not live by fear, and we will go out still and reach those people, Lord. If you were listening here tonight, then maybe you are not saved. If you were to die, you are not 100% sure where you'd be going. If you were like that, and you were listening, and you said, I don't know when I, where I'd be going to die. I don't know if I'm going to heaven or hell. We want to help you. There's a number under the screen you can call, and somebody there, uh, and that person could go through verse by verse with the scriptures and show you how you can be saved. It will be a blessing if you call, and that person can speak to you. It's important for us to get saved. The Bible says, take heed, let him that think he stand it, take heed, lest he fall. Folks, tonight is the night you can receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Lord, thank you for this message once again, Lord. And I pray, God, uh, for safety as our people go home, Lord. I pray, God, for the bless the man of God we preach Sunday, Lord, and Sunday night, Lord, and the other preacher on Wednesday. I pray you bless and protect our people throughout this week, God. In Jesus' name, amen. My thanks.